O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. You are my rescuer, my help. O Lord, do not delay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, the king of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azur from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years I will restore to this place all the vessels of the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place to Babylon. I will bring back to this place Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the exiles of Judea who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. The prophet Jeremiah answered the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people assembled in the house of the Lord and said, Amen. Thus may the Lord do. May he fulfill the things you have prophesied by bringing back the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles back from Babylon to this place. But now, listen to what I'm about to say in your hearing and the hearing of all the people. From of old, the prophets who were before you and me prophesied war, woe, and pestilence against the many lands and the mighty kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace is recognized as truly sent by the Lord only when his prophetic pr prediction is fulfilled. Therefore, the prophet Hananiah took the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it, and said in the presence of all the people, Thus says the Lord, Even so, within two years I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from off the neck of all the nations. At that, the prophet Jeremiah went away. Sometime after the prophet Hananiah had broke the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah to go to Hananiah and say this, Thus says the Lord, By breaking a wooden yoke, you forge an iron yoke. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. A yoke of iron I will place around the necks of all the nations serving Nebuchadnezzar, 
the king of Babylon. And they shall serve him, even the beasts of the field I give him. To the prophet Hananiah, the prophet Jeremiah said, Hear this, Hananiah. The Lord has not sent you. You have raised false confidence in this people. For this, says the Lord, I will dispatch you from the face of the earth. This very year you shall die, because you have preached a rebellion against the Lord. That same year, in the seventh month, Hananiah the prophet died. The word of the Lord. Lord, teach me your statutes. Lord, teach me your statutes. Remove from me the way of falsehood. Favor me with your law. Lord, teach me your statutes. Take not the word of truth from my mouth, for in your ordinances is my hope. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let those who turn to me, who fear you, and acknowledge your decrees. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let my heart be perfect in your statutes, that I, that I may not be put to shame. Lord, teach me your statutes. Sinners wait to destroy me, but I, hate, but I pay heed to your decree. Lord, teach me your statutes. From the ordinances I turn away, for you have instructed me. Lord, teach me your statutes. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are King of Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side of the sea while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And... Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, 
Why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. After making the crossing, they came to land at Gennesaret. When the men of that place recognized him, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought to him all those who were sick and begged him that they might touch only the tassel on his cloak. And as many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What I love about the Gospels um, in particular is, and one of the things that really gives me the hint that it really is the Word of God, is that you can end up reading it hundreds of times throughout your life and never really reflect on a Gospel as uh, in a certain light. And for me, um, I had reflected on this passage in terms of trust in God for a very long time, um, and that's how I normally preach on it. But uh, because of what's going on in the world today and because of conversations I just had with close friends, I'm seeing it in a slightly different way, and that's the idea of um, how it, we're supposed to react in the face of death very different topic, um, but also kind of pertinent because I think right now um, there's in the background of a lot of our minds right now, or in the minds of your loved ones, there is this general anxiety. And we have to say that one thing that I have not heard um, actually said out loud, I've heard a lot of people say that they fear the coronavirus and they fear this and they fear that, but I ha don't think I've heard many people say it out loud. Are you afraid of dying? I was having this conversation again um, because, I mean, first of all, it's in our gospel today because the disciples, um, this is their second time that they are um, on the sea and the waves are throwing them about. It happened two times. The first time that it happened, it was a really, really big storm where you had a whole bunch of fishermen who were terrified of the storm. And then Jesus basically is, he's in the boat, he's sleeping, and then he wakes up and calms the storm. So it was an immediate fear of death, kind of like one of those things where you're, you're in a, getting ready to get into a car accident or you've just gotten into a car accident. It's just a major shock to your system, that kind of fear of death. The disciples had to go through that first. This one was a little bit more low grade because if you look at the words that are used, it just says that the waves are tossing the boat and the wind was against them. And it was um, a, a lower grade fear of death, but it was extended because it says that Jesus came to them in the fourth watch of the night. And just without going in the details of what that means, it basically meant that the night was divided into four different segments, equally divided. So you're talking about this is the last three hours before dawn. So they've been struggling for a really long time before Jesus gets here. And so they're now having to face death um, in a different way. Instead of having that punctuated fear of death, they're having this low-grade fear where at any moment something could go wrong, and yet they're continuing to struggle, they're continuing to struggle, and boy, doesn't that seem a lot like what we're going through right now. But I was talking again with some friends uh, just the other day, and we were talking about some mutual acquaintances and how they were doing, just catching up. And we got to this one particular person who hadn't really left their house at all um, during the midst of coronavirus. And, you know, there, we all have to um, take care of our own health. So we weren't he, just criticizing people who didn't leave their house, but criticizing maybe um, or talking just in a way about this person's reaction. And that the reason this person wasn't leaving their house, it was not necessarily because they had a bad health situation, because they really didn't. It was just that they had gone into the state of such heightened anxiety. And we were just talking about just a little bit about why, why that could be. And then finally, um, it was just amazing. We were talking all, about all sorts of different things. And then somebody finally said it, and they said it out loud. Maybe this person's just afraid of dying. And to me, that was so strange because we had been, like, quite frankly, you know, I've been in the midst of coronavirus just like you for the last, you know, four or five months. And to be honest with you, that thought 
had never consciously thought, uh, entered my mind before, and yet at the same time, um, it's kind of been in the back of my mind the entire time. I don't know how you've been with that same thought, but, um, but there it is. Let's say it out loud and ask the question, where are you in the face of death right now? Because as Christians, I think, um, it, the, the, the myth that we are told, and it's only partially a myth, is that as Christians, we're supposed to have such faith in God that when we go face to face with death, we are ready to go and we have no fear. And that's part true and part false. Because when you look at Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God, the night before he died, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he feared death. We know he feared death for two reasons. First of all, because he was praying to his heavenly father that if this chalice, this trial could pass from him, let it happen. But not his will, but God's will, the father's be done. But that, that just shows you he feared death. He was, he was scared what was going to happen. The second was, it says he was so anxious that he started to sweat blood. That's pretty anxious right there. I've never seen somebody so anxious that they sweat blood. And so there's a fear of death that just comes simply from our human nature, something that death is just a scary thing, and no matter what, when you come face to face with it, it's going to be scary. And I just want to say to you, if that's the fear of death that you're experiencing, if you have an immediate brush with death or you ca catch the coronavirus and you're suddenly just worried about, well, what's going to happen next? That's okay. But then there's other reasons why a person might fear death. And I think people might fear death for a few other reasons. The, one of the reasons would be that you realize that you have something left undone. And so it could be for several reasons. You could be a parent who is thinking about their children and thinking, oh my goodness, if I go, what's going to happen to my child? And in that case, too, that is a perfectly natural and it's a good reason to fear death because it is a fear that is motivated out of love. And so if you have that kind of fear, brothers and sisters, that's okay. The other kind of fear that can be the same type of thing is that you are fearing death because you realize that there's something left undone because you simply haven't been doing what you were supposed to be doing. Maybe you didn't say you, you, there's a relationship that you have just been you know, letting sit on the rocks over in the corner somewhere, and uh, you have just not wanted to fix that relationship. Or maybe you realize that you um, have been living your life in such a way that you have put yourself, um, you've just been neglecting your spiritual life. You just don't pray like you ought to. And even there, brothers and sisters, even if we could assign some blame right there that maybe you should have done better with that time, I just want to tell you right now, if you fear death for that reason, that's okay. You go to confession and then ask yourself, if that's where you are, um, just ask yourself, what do I need to start doing today in order to make sure that I am going to be ready to meet God when the time comes? But then there's other things. Um, maybe the reason why you fear death is because of a lack of faith. Maybe it's a lack of faith because you really don't know if you are a convinced Christian and you just don't know what's going to happen on the other side of death. Or maybe it's the fact that um, you, know, you are a convinced Christian and yet at the same time there is just something in your heart that is unconverted. Something in you that has made it so that you're just not trusting in God um, in, in the circumstances of what's going to happen. And again, brothers and sisters, in either one of those situations, it's okay. Some of them um, are going to require more work on our part. Cert, um, certain of them are more natural than others. And yet every single one of those is a situation where if you realize that there is something that you have failed to do, you just simply go to our God in confession you say what you did out loud, and then you ask yourself from this day forward, what do I need to start doing? And so I think, brothers and sisters, that there are many, many good reasons of fearing death in the midst of coronavirus. But at the same time, let's just say it out loud. Let's, let's just say it, that the reasons that we have for fearing death 
are reasons which are oftentimes natural, oftentimes good. Um, sometimes they are pointing us to something that we need to do in the future. But wherever you are, because I'm sure that all of us have some sort of anxiety over this, ask yourself, why exactly is it that I am fearing death? Why is it? What, what, what is it? Is it, it? is it a natural fear? I mean, are you just of the age where this, the coronavirus is something that can really affect your health? And if you catch it, well, that's because I know I'm not, that's not where I am. I'm, I'm 34 and it's just, I'm a lot lower risk, but I'm not the only person in this building, you know? Um, but ask yourself, is that the reason why? Are you fearing death because um, of some sort of lack of faith? That either you don't believe in God, you don't believe in his promises, or you just haven't fully placed your trust in him? Or are you fearing death because there is something left to be done, either um, a natural obligation that God's given you, like your family, or because you just haven't been doing what you're supposed to do? That's the five reasons that I can count for fearing death. Ask yourself if, it, um, if it's one of those, which one is it? Because what it does is it gives you a way forward. It gives you something to be praying about, to bringing to our Lord in prayer, and to be working through up here. Because I think that it's very possible, no matter where we are in any single one of those things, that it's possible to bring it to God and to cast our anxieties onto him. Because that's just what God does. People who um, have been... Um, I had a good friend. He was dying of cancer. He was terrified of death when he first got his, uh, his illness. But towards the end, after experiencing death over a long period of time, even the natural fear of death started to go away for him. It's something that if we cast our concerns on the Lord, he is willing to walk us through it. But the first thing I think we need to do in order for that to happen, brothers and sisters, is to acknowledge that that's what we're experiencing. And then second, to ask ourselves, why is it that we are experiencing this fear of death? What is my particular fear? And then after that, to go and to cast it upon the Lord. Because in the end, brothers and sisters, um, our Christian faith tells us that on the other side of death is something beautiful. That we are going to be reward for our faith in this current life. That um, we're going to have eternity on the other side of this life. And that in the end, we were only pilgrims on this earth in the first place. And that our true home is our heavenly one. So cast your cares upon the Lord, because he is always there to those who seek his refuge. And let us stand and offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. For our church, may the Lord raise up holy men and women to humbly labor on her behalf. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may our God of justice guide them in working for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely or homebound, those isolated by the COVID pandemic, may Jesus' healing and consoling hand be upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, including those watching on live stream, may God's word continue to guide us in truth and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who've died from chronic illness, from accidents, from, from the COVID-19 especially, may the Lord welcome them into the fullness of the kingdom of God let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pause for a moment so you can add the intentions that you hold in the silence of your hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer you these, our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be in accord with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. The praise and the glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Who is on in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be. Prayer of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. A company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.